Hey guys, this is Production Music Live. In this video, we are quickly going to talk about differences between the simpler device of Ableton 9.2 here on the left. It's also inside of Ableton 9.01 and 2. And the new version of the simpler, this one in Ableton 9.5. And you see, they look a little bit different. And I just loaded up the simple project here where we are playing this first channel with a vocal sample. I put it in both versions of Ableton and you can already see it loads up the simpler and it looks a bit different. And since the original project was created and saved in 9.2, I'm getting this upgrade button here. You don't get that if you like create your project in 9.5 already and save it then. But you get this upgrade button here and what does it do? It basically upgrades your filter here because that's the old filter section where you can put on your filter and then select low pass 12, low pass 24, high pass 12 and 24 and stuff like that. And you see they put it in here as well. But if I click upgrade, it puts in those new filters where you select your filter shapes here and then your algorithms, different filter algorithms. So this is one of the new features, but the point of this video is finding all the functionalities that you typically use in your simple tracks and like identifying where to find them in the new simpler. The new simpler has three versions and the classic version is the one that's supposed to be like this one here. The one shot is a different mode and then you have the slice mode where for example you can put in like drum loops and slice them up nicely and then play them with your able to push or something. But let's go back to classic mode and see how we can use the new simpler in the same way we are used to using the old one. So let me put in some more space here so we see a little more. So we are playing those chords with this vocal sample here. If I just hit the sample on my keyboard, this is what it sounds like. So let's play it together and play around with sustain, attack and decay. Okay, how would we do that in 9.5? We find our attack, decay, sustain, release and volume. All those controls are down here and you have two views. You have the sample and you have the control views. So in this sample and in the control view, those will always be down here. So whenever you're looking for this area, you find it down here. Your volume is here. And transpose. Like you need that a lot or I'm using it a lot. So I need transpose. I need to know where it is. Here it is. Detune, sometimes useful as well, is here as well. Everything is in the control section. Glide, glide modes, portamento glide, off, time. All this can be found here and there. Also, sometimes we use the spread knob to widen our sound. Let's play it. Well, maybe it's easier to actually hear that if we put off our delay effects and reverbs. So let me put reverb and delay off for now. And let's open the spread. So we are moving more into the stereo spectrum. Our velocity can be found here and the equivalent will be here and panning left, right, everything is here. And if you want to use your LFOs, you will find them here, like com compared to they were here before and your filter envelope shape can be found here. So it's all there. And also if we go back into the sample mode and we are asking ourselves, so like how does sample editing and looping samples work now? You're probably used to dragging around those locators here. So for example, select the part. Like 
like that. And maybe you sometimes you also go ahead and loop a section like you want to make this more a choir kind of sound, less staccato, and you're trying to loop this area here. And you go loop. And we can actually emphasize that by playing longer notes. Okay. Um, go back and put the, com like the sidechain compression off for now. And you see, you can also say, okay, our loop is a bit shorter, our fades in the beginning and the end are a bit steeper, and we are trying to smoothen like the transition between moving from the end back to the front. So how are we doing that in the new version? Let's go back and you see we also have those locators here, so we can do the same thing. And drag the end in there as well and put it a bit longer, something like that. And also make sure we have long notes. Like this. So, and now we want to put it into loop mode. And also put off the sidechain compressor. It's already quite a good guess here because it's not that far off from like the shape is very very similar. But anyways we have your fade button here but before you need to like cut the length a little bit and the loop a little bit and maybe also the starting but no let's keep the starting the way it is and just like open the fade so you see we are trying to get the same type of shape in there. You see you can use the new simpler just the way you used the old one plus you have many more functions. Just wanted to be sure that whenever we are using the old one in the tutorial and you happen to have the new one you can follow along or also in case it's the other way around it's not that difficult. Every setting can be transferred between those at least in the classic mode. If you were to do stuff in the slicing and one-shot modes, that wouldn't be possible necessarily in, in the old one. Let's play the other stuff together. So if you like those sounds here, they are part of a project file I'm explaining in a start to finish course on our website. So we have this deep house start to finish course on our website and I use those elements in there and I use a lot more. It's actually in the end, it's not seven tracks, but it's more like 50 and we are making a complete track start to finish in this course. And I'm going to throw this little project file into the underlying template of the course as well. So you can check the link in the description so you can get this template and this project file or you can get it all together and watch the course if you're interested in how to make your own professionally sounding Deep House tracks. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Subscribe to our channel, visit us on productionmusiclife.com and I hope to see you next time.